はい、皆さん、こんにちは。アショカの渡辺でございます。えっ、ー、と、今日は、えっ、ー、と、アショカフェローの講演のためにお時間をありがとうございます。アショカは、あの、ご存知の方も多いと思いますが、社会にある大小さまざまな問題の解決に光をか当てる個人を発掘して、アショカフェローとしてに認証いたしまして、グローバルネットワークを作っています。そしてそのそれぞれの取り組みがそれまでになかった存在しなかった新しいアプローチであることそして非常に大きなインパクトを生む可能性をはらんでいることここをまず私たちは先行にあたって見ています。で1980年以来42年間にネットワークに加わってあ加わったフェローは92カ国から約4000人に超えてを,を超えていますで本日のスピーカーであるフェデリコ・ガルセアは2018年に4年前にフェロー認証を受けたイタリア・フローレンス出身の,あのアシュカフェローですそしてそれぞれのアシュカフェローが何か喫緊の課題っていうのに取り組んでいるわけですねでその彼にとっての喫緊の課題とは3つの相重なる問題ですそしてその1つは森林伐採による大気汚染の上昇、そして地球温暖化の加速、これがまあ私たちが<咳>知っている喫緊の課題です。それからもう一つは、生計を立てるすべが森林伐採以外にない、その森林伐採が違法であってもです、その他にチョイスがないからやっている多くの人々がいます。これも喫緊の課題ですね。それから3番目はこのことを周知していながらあの私たちはこの東京に座っていて現地の事情もよくわからないしだから何もしていないという私たちの無力感がございますね。でこれがやはり課題だと思います。この3つを解消するためにできたのがトリーダムです。そして今回の講演についてですねコミュニケーションを私たちはトリーダムのオフィスと始めたのがちょうど1年前だったんですけれどもその頃の記録では植林の数が約200万本だったんですそして参加企業が5600社でしたそれがちょうど1年経って今すごい勢いで、えー、と拡大を見ておりまして17カ国に330万本約そして約19万農家が恩恵を受けているというすごい広がりを見せています。それでは、えー、とちょっとその様子を百分は一見にしかずなので、えー、とビデオで見てみたいと思います。本当に短い2分のビデオ、その後に彼に話してもらいます。This is our nursery. It has produced over 200,000 seedlings that have been taken to the farmers. He who gives you a flute gives you a one day food. But he who gives you a seed, he has given you a lifelong food supply. We have harsh three avocado. They are marketable in all over the world. We shall get rich very soon.
We have equipped our farmers in terms of ideas. Now they can manage their land sustainably. So thank you, Federico. Let me introduce you to our audience today. Hello, everybody from Italy. So first of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm Federico Garcia, the founder and the CEO of Tridom. Um, today, I will... Um, I will talk a little bit about my story, how I uh, I comes to well, how my my life bring me to finally decide to create a social business and try to tackle uh, especially the problem related to climate change and deforestation. So. Um, I don't know uh, in Japan, but in Italy, when um, you are 18 years old and you have to choose uh, your university, well, I was a little bit in trouble. Uh, I don't know what to do in my life. I already had a couple of uh, short working experience, but uh, um, well, I was not sure about my future. So uh, I choose uh, um, the political science uh, um, university that is basically a mix of uh, um, history, law, uh, economics, uh, because uh, it uh, allowed me to have uh, several choices uh, for my future works. Um, and during my university, I was lucky because I had the opportunity to uh, study abroad uh, four years, uh, one in Denmark, so in Copenhagen and the other two years in, uh, uh, in Spain. And during my, well, my working abroad, well, I continue my studying abroad. I, um, well, I learned uh, something about uh, um, social business, especially in Denmark. And uh, well, thank you for the slide. <laughs> and uh, then uh, in, um, in late 2007, uh, a friend of mine uh, met in uh, Copenhagen, um, asked me to join a project where ideally we should bring energy in isolated village in Africa, thanks to the development of a sustainable biofuels project. At that moment, I was working in a bank in, um, in Barcelona, and uh, basically I, I, I got bored because, uh, well, I feel that my work was uh, uh, not bringing value to the community, to the environment. So every day was the same at uh, 6 p.m. I, I come out from the office and I really don't care about my work. I have this, the sensation that uh, my value goes to, well, to some to a rich bank and to investor without adding uh, uh, value to people and community. So um, I was happy to join uh, this uh, project that was called Agroils, and uh, especially in this project, we I worked there for three years. Uh, we started in four people, and in three years we were a, a group of twenty people, and we especially developed project in. Uh, um, West Africa, so basically Ghana and Cameroon. Uh, and when uh, we we were on the field, we we put a big force to develop a project uh, related to biofuels. But what we noticed in the field uh, is that there was a huge problem related to illegal deforestation. So basically. Uh, several villages in Cameroon, especially in the area of Mankim, they survive by selling 
a hectare of forest for wood reason. So uh, we noticed this bad practice and we, we were thinking if we can uh, find a solution or creating a project where we can change this bad practice. So basically um, the idea was to pay and especially support farmer, train them, talk them about the importance of trees uh, and support them to plant new trees instead of cutting trees. Uh, well, it looks easy at the beginning, but the fact is that uh, for, uh, um, for people in Cameroon who lives all their life in the middle of forest without visiting a city, well, towns and other places, the world is a forest. So for them, uh, they, they don't feel really at the beginning the importance of uh, saving uh, and preserve the forest. So for us, the first challenge was to find a business model and uh, explain them that uh, <clears throat> forests are very, very important for the entire planet. Um, so acting like that, of course, uh, um, we recognize that it's not just paying the farmer for planting trees. Otherwise, they just uh, get paid when they plant the trees and then uh, probably they start cutting trees again or they are starting to do other activities. But we should uh, provide them a system, um, a project where they really perceive the value of trees. And uh, I think that now in Cameroon and in all the other country where we work, we, um, we really uh, find that a, a system that uh, uh, bring value for the environment and the community. And later I will explain a little bit, but basically is building agroforestry system where we mix forest trees, fruit trees, and also seasonal crop. So we create integrated system uh, respecting the, um, the local ecosystem and biodiversity. So um, I'm very happy because uh, I think that uh, what we have created now is the best job of my life. Uh, before Tridom, as I explained, I've done uh, more than 40 jobs. Uh, the first one was uh, doing ice cream in the city center of Florence. Then uh, I'm doing magician. And uh, as I told you, I end up in a bank that probably is in Italy is famous to be the, the best job because it's something really where you are sure that at the end of the month you get paid. Uh, and uh, But uh, my sensation and was that... Uh, this, is, this was not enough uh, for me. So uh, I think that freedom is now mm, the best in terms of uh, the, the impact we are providing and also the innovation, what we are trying to, to create. Um, and in, um, maybe you can, uh, you can go to the next slide, please. So also, uh, the creation of freedom was uh, something really mm, funny, I would say, because uh, basically, uh, up until now, I, I explained you a little bit the experience on the field. But oh, usually when you create a project uh, or a, a business, uh, you always connect some dots. And, uh, and for freedom was the same, because in... Uh, um, I recognize the problem on the field of illegal deforestation that we want to plant trees, but then uh, as uh, many social business, we should think uh, how we can uh, afford this problem, where we can find the money and the support to do this action. And uh, to solve this problem, I took the inspiration from Farmville in uh, Late 2010, Farmville was uh, a very, very famous uh, social game in Facebook where people from all over the world, they built virtual uh, farm, meaning that they have to take care of the, 
uh, of the crops, uh, they can uh, add the, some uh, uh, trees to the farm, and they can compete with other gamers uh, to have the best farm. And uh, basically, I was in love with a girl, and I compete with her to have the best farm. And every time my, my farm was great, she, re she had received the notification, so it, it was my way to, uh, well, to contact a little bit her. And sometimes, because I was, uh, I was a little bit busy, uh, I used my credit card to add uh, special edition virtual trees in my farm. And uh, the fact is that my colleague, a colleague of mine, he uh, made fun of me. He told me, um, well, you are, uh, you are a little bit silly, uh, you will never conquer her because of your farm and you are basically wasting money because you are paying to plant virtual trees. But uh, in this moment, we connect uh, the idea with the project in Cameroon. And we were thinking if we create a web platform where people can uh, support, adopt a tree, uh, it may work. Uh, because there was 3 million people in farm mill paying uh, to add the uh, virtual stuff uh, in, the, in the farm. So uh, connecting the dots and uh, especially uh, mixing the, uh, the work on the field with the digital platform was the first idea and the, and the innovation of Freedom. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So basically, what is Freedom Now? Freedom Now is the first web platform worldwide that allows users and the companies to plant a tree or a forest directly online and follow the impact by receiving notification directly online, supporting farmers and NGOs all over the world. Uh, our goal is to become the landmark global platform worldwide for planting trees. Next slide, please. But um, what is important and which is the uniqueness of Freedom? Uh, the unique is that, uh, uh, as I wrote, we create a sort of new kind of trees. So every tree is planted on the field as a sort of alter ego online. So we replace the trees by providing in a true sort of a three page, all the information about the trees. First of all, every tree is directly linked to an users or a corporation. So in this way, we guarantee the maximum transparency, meaning that uh, of course, the trees are planted in Asia, uh, Africa, South America, very far from where the supporter is based. So this system allows that even if you will never saw with your eyes the, the trees physically, you, will, you can follow online the project and you are more confident that the tree is planted. And uh, moreover, in this three page, you can find uh, all other information. For example, the species of the trees, uh, the GPS point uh, where exactly the tree is planted, the photo of your tree when the tree is in the nursery, and uh, the photo of your trees when is uh, planted in the field. Um, also, we have created a section that we call Tree Diary, where we provide the updates and notification about the project where your trees is planted. This way, um, we can uh, engage the users and the corporation in the long term. So we call it long lasting engagement because uh, we think that uh, it's not just plant a tree, but uh, uh, one of our core value is uh, uh, to grow the tree in the long term. So 
we prefer to call us tree growers instead of tree planting. So all the efforts we are doing uh, to grow trees in the long term, we want to uh, tell to our users and, uh, and the way we tell them is uh, updating them uh, with the tree diary where we post uh, photos, videos, interviews to the farmers, all that can really um, create an emotional connection with the project and with the with the tree uh, you are uh, you have you have adopted or you have gifted but um, also the most one of the most important uh, idea that we have created is the gifting of the tree so uh, we basically it was a sort of casualty talking with some uh, users and corporations at the beginning, but uh, especially in Italy, we recognize that uh, a lot of people want to do something for the planet, for supporting social cause, uh, but sometimes uh, we don't know how to do it. Uh, we don't have the social proof for making a donation or, or supporting a project. So the idea to gift a tree to share a tree with someone else, the possibility to share on social network your action is something that I think it's really, really powerful. Because in this way, we mix the gifting idea that in Italy or all over the world, I think for uh, some uh, gifting uh, uh, dates, for birthday, for a wedding, for several occasions, every day we need to make a gift to friend, family, and uh, sometimes we, we don't know what to gift. And uh, by gifting a tree, we solve uh, also this problem because basically you can just uh, plant and gift a tree with two click. So it's very easy. And uh, uh, also the price, the starting price for planting a tree is 15 euros. Uh, you pay just once and we guarantee the maintenance uh, for uh, for more than 10 years. So if I ask you which uh, kind of gift you can buy for 15 euros that really provide a, a, a high value to the, to the receiver. Uh, next slide, please. So here, uh, I'm happy to share some of uh, um, the results uh, achieved uh, to date. So basically to date, we have planted more than uh, 3 million trees in 17 countries. We mainly work in degraded, degraded areas of the world. So it can be deforested area, um, like desertification, areas where there is a risk of desertification. Uh, so basically we work in the subtropical area of Africa, Central, South America, and even in uh, Nepal and uh, Thailand, for example. Um, thanks to our work, uh, we have supported more than 180,000 farmers that thanks to us, they are receiving training, they are receiving uh, the, the plants, uh, we are supporting them uh, since the beginning. We have built uh, more than 40 nursery in partner with local NGO. We select the species, uh, we graft uh, fruit uh, trees uh, to make, to allow the trees to produce fruit uh, uh, faster. And uh, thanks to our job, of course, uh, trees, uh, the one of the first goal is that trees uh, uh, absorb CO2 in the trunk and in the root during their growth. So this is probably one of the key aspects and the key benefit, but also we solve a problem related to desertification, soil erosion, we promote biodiversity, and we, by providing also fruit tree to the farmers, we, um, um, we incentivize and we uh, provide social benefit because the farmers own the land, the farmers own the trees, 
and the farmers own the fruit deriving from the trees. So the long-term impact is because the farmers after the three, four years can harvest the fruit, guarantee them and their family food security first, but then the farmers can sell the fruit on local markets. So uh, we provide them also an extra income coming from the trees. And coming back to, to the, uh, the first part, when I, um, when I say that uh, we, we are not just paying the farmer, for now, the bigger guarantee that the farmers will take care of the tree is not the small reimbursement that we gave them at the beginning, but is the fact that we train them, we explain them that thanks to the trees, they will have uh, extra income for long term. As uh, uh, one of the, uh, the manager and the farmers uh, explain uh, in the video, is a long term uh, income. So next slide, please. Well, this is, I think, uh, one of the best uh, thing I have done in this job because um, Mm, I think that, uh, especially at the beginning of a startup or a social business, well, the idea is important, but usually I think that uh, the idea counts for 10% of the project. But the most important is having a strong and committed team. And now I'm super proud that we are more than 100 employees in uh, five offices in, uh, in Europe, so we are based in Florence, but we have an office in Germany, UK, uh, Holland, and France. Um, along the time, we have uh, always decided to develop internally all the key activities of the company. So basically from Italy, we manage all and we coordinate all the forestry activities. We have uh, a digital product and uh, IT engineering team. So we have developed all our web platform, all the digital infrastructure. Then we have a team of uh, partnership and sales business to business. And uh, later on, uh, my kind colleague Tatiana will explain a little bit how we partner with the corporation. And then we have a, a team of marketing and communication that of course support us and our partner to better communicate the action and the benefit we are providing by, uh, by planting trees. Um, of course, uh, um, I still I recognize since the beginning that as we are providing benefit for communities, but also for the entire planet, we should uh, try to uh, create a, an amazing working space and uh, make, well, feel our colleague uh, to be a little bit at home, to be happy, to be engaged because we are all working to a very strong mission and we are working for our future generation. So uh, this is, uh, mm, of course, my mission now is to plant trees, uh, to grow this company, but uh, one of my uh, key mission is also to create uh, a, an outstanding uh, uh, working, working place. Um, so, well, I, I think that uh, this is a little bit the story right now, but well, uh, before the end, I, I also want to remark that uh, we, we work with more than uh, 1 million users in our community. Uh, more than 9,000 corporations have joined uh, our project. And um, as I told you before, we have found a different uh, reason and we of course, uh, understand that why users plant or give trees, uh, they do it for offset their personal carbon footprint. They, especially uh, most of our users give trees uh, 
And this is a powerful tool that we have used to acquire 1 million users because we have created a sort of uh, um, organic virality. Because when I give the tree to you, you have with the tree code, for example, I can give you a tree by WhatsApp or by email or by printing a gift card. You should register it on our community to redeem your tree and you start your digital experience. Um, what we have discovered by partner, partnering with the corporation is that usually corporation um, use and create the forest to better communicate their uh, environmental uh, commitment. So sometimes it's hard for a corporation to show to their shareholders, stakeholder what they are doing. So in Italy, since we are kids, but I think all over the world, uh, since we are kids, they, 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 our teacher told us how it's important to plant trees. And we strongly believe that our communication and tell us, uh, well, you are adopting a tree, I plant a forest, is very powerful, very easy to understand, uh, especially in a world where we, we are, well, pushed by several, several messages and communication, planting trees is something that uh, is very easy to, to, be, to be understood. Uh, next slide, please. So, mm, well, I think that during our journey, um, we have always tried to, uh, to be part of the, well, more important organization worldwide that for us, well, in part uh, is uh, something that uh, gave us the, uh, the consistency of our action. But um, here, I wanna say that, uh, first of all, uh, when I create Freedom, uh, I was not sure if to create a corporation or an NGOs because planting trees uh, is, uh, is something that usually is done by no profit organization. But uh, in late 2010, when I was deciding which kind of organization I want to create, um, I look at all the environmental NGOs, the famous such as uh, Greenpeace, WWF, and I recognize that uh, all the environmental organization, but also sometimes in uh, other social uh, activities, they need the 30, 40, 50 years to become big and to have a strong impact. So uh, I recognize that I, I was not sure if we have the time uh, to, if we have 30, 40, 50 years to tackle the problem of climate change and the um, deforestation. So I was thinking that if we create a corporation, eventually we can grow faster. Eventually we can raise money from investors. And to date we have raised more than 12 million euros from uh, entrepreneur, impact investors, uh, family offices. And of course, uh, raising money from investors is a key driver of growth. So it's very important for, um, for you as a social business to always trying to balance, uh, well, economical profitability and, uh, and impact. Um, and um, well, long story short, in 2014, uh, I was traveling in California, US, and I, for the first time, I, I see the movement of benefit corporation. And, uh, I, I think that you all knows what it is, but basically it's creating a, a, a business where you not only uh, look at economic value, but you also have other goals, like a social business, like most of the Ashoka Fellow, and I think, uh, I th well, I, I was thinking that this was really our DNA being a, a benefit corporation. So um, we were the first B Corp in, uh, in Italy and one of the first in Europe. And um, uh, um, I think that uh, now is a movement, but I think that uh, looking toward the future, 
all corporations in the world uh, will become a B Corp. So all corporations in the world in the future should take care of the environment, of the employees, of the community. Is something that uh, we can't miss. Uh, and uh, I want to I wanna say that I'm optimistic for the future because the first time in 2010, when I contact 10 corporations in Italy and, uh, well, ask them to plant trees, nine corporations of 10 corporations told me we do not uh, uh, take care of the environment, we don't have a sustainability manager, we don't have a, a, a CSR uh, manager. But now it's totally the opposite. So nine corporations have some sustainability program, they support uh, uh, environmental action, and just one, only one, do not uh, take care of the environment, and I'm pretty sure that this one will not exist in the next 10 years. And uh, well, last slide, please, is just uh, to show you where we are right now. We are uh, surrounding by, by trees. That is uh, basically what we love. And uh, thank you, of course, for your time. Um, if you have some question, I'm uh, I'm here for you. Thank you very much, Federico. Um, we will first move on to Tatiana's part. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then we will later have the questions and answer session. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. It's uh, a pleasure being here with you today. Uh, to briefly introduce myself, uh, I'm Tatiana. I've been working for Trinum for the past two years. And prior to that, I studied corporate fundraising. Um, and uh, to, to enter, let's say, the world of uh, sustainability. Um, Yoi, can we have the slides, please? Thank you. So I'm here today as I am part of the international partnerships team at Freedom, and I take care also of the operations. Um, what we'd like to share with you today is um, a little more about our methodology and the three principles that it is based on. So as uh, also Federico explained, uh, our goal is to uh, plant trees, grow trees, on the long run, and these uh, can only happen by transferring skills to local communities and making sure that they are onboarded in the project and they uh, completely understand and are engaged with the overall goal that it's you know, for all the planet. Um, and this also translates into designing agroforestry system uh, in collaboration with our local developer on the field to uh, identify and then uh, plant the right trees in the right place and, and for the right purpose. That it's, uh, let's say, our, our claim. And next step, because we want to make sure that this will last in time, uh, we need and we provide monitoring, guiding, and um, support to the farmers uh, to take care of the trees after they are planted. So we also perform training sessions and uh, project, project inspections uh, around uh, the year. Uh, next slide, please. And all of these on the field is, uh, can happen uh, thanks to our forestry team. So we have a dedicated team of experts. They, are, um, they have an international experience in agronomy, in agriculture, and in working with, with local communities. Uh, they are basically, uh, they play a fundamental role in freedom having transparency on what happens on the field and then translates into the platform. Uh, what they do is they identify, scout for the best partners, uh, as Federico was saying, NGOs and cooperative farmers uh, that then will take care on a daily basis of the, the tree planting project together with the local communities. Uh, they design the agroforestry system and then they put it in place. So they perform several visits around the year to check on the development and monitoring the projects, that the trees are growing uh, healthy, and they also perform training sessions, not only about taking care of the tree, but also about 
uh, mapping the trees with GPS tools, and then how to maintain the, the nurseries. Next slide, please. Um, everything that the forestry team performs on the field uh, enables us to provide also the digital experience of our trees. So we are planting real trees that are that attract and have a virtual alter ego. It means that for every tree, there is a digital experience on the platform and a story to be followed on remote from everywhere you are. So it doesn't matter if you're planting a tree from Japan and your tree is actually being planted in, in Thailand or in Ecuador, uh, you can follow the story of the tree and the project it belongs to on the platform. Uh, we call this page the Tree Diary. It's, uh, it's an engaging experience that keeps being fed uh, with photos, with videos, with interviews, with the local community, and also educational contents about the agroforestry project, the reason why we're planting the seeds, the impact it will have on the environment and on the community itself. Next slide, please. Uh, so why companies are supporting us is that, of course, the corporations are representing, uh, have a key role, and they are key actors and drivers of change towards sustainability. Uh, companies are made of people, and change uh, can happen also thanks to companies' inputs. Um, so many are choosing to commit and grow trees with us and partner with us. Uh, to support, of course, the fight uh, to climate change, thanks to a nature-based solution that also absorbs carbon, uh, but also to have an impact on the, on the communities and to generate socioeconomic uh, sustainable development. And last but not least, if we can move to the next slide, um, supporting a um, tree planting with, with Treedom uh, also enables companies to have a digital forest, which is a gathering of all the trees that the company decides to support uh, all over the world with us. Uh, and on top of that, for as I said, for every tree, there is a digital page. So every tree that the company supports can then be given to someone. And this someone is part of the company's community on the forest and will receive all the notifications uh, about what's going on uh, with, the, with uh, his or her tree, uh, what's going on with the community, and they will really feel invested in the impact of the tree uh, for the planet. Uh, and also, you know, uh, having a, a relationship that will last long with, with the company that gave, uh, that gave them the tree. So this is uh, more or less an overview of, of freedom from the, the corporate perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, arigato gozaimashita. Thank you so much. Tatiana and, and uh, both of you, thank you very much. Um, we have some questions um, we collected before the uh, start. So let me share that with you. Um, the first one, please share your very, very first step of starting freedom. You know, which country, it was the, who was the uh, first member of the first team. What was it like? Your former colleague or your family or, and how they started the very first step because many people are struggling to put the idea into reality. And they would like to, if you can share your experience. Yes. Thank you for your question. So um, basically in late 2010 in Italy, um, there was uh, no possibility to raise money from investors. So the ecosystem of startups, I will say, uh, it was uh, really, really small. And especially when I talked the first time with some investor, I told them I wanna plant trees. Uh, they were very skeptical about uh, our project and they mainly focus on uh, digital uh, startups uh, where 
they can expect uh, like skyrocks, uh, exponential growth. While planting trees, it was something still, still very, very at the beginning. So um, I think that uh, uh, what we have built in the past is that we have tried from the first day to create uh, a business, an impact business model where we can uh, um, raise money since the beginning. And uh, we recognize that probably um, making partnership with corporation could uh, help us to become a little bit more known and to uh, sell them uh, like uh, 1,000, 5,000 trees instead of selling one by one trees to an online community where we had not the financial resource to build uh, a, a good uh, website or to invest uh, in digital marketing and acquire users. So uh, when we have started uh, um, with, well, we were thinking that uh, contacting company was the first way. And uh, I think that at the beginning, we have sold more our passion than uh, a really a service or a good product. And this is, uh, something that um, is very important when you create a project to, um, to, to present your product to the market, to talk with everyone, because this way you can collect feedback, you can evolve your product based on the feedback received from the market. So uh, I've seen a dozen of startups that maybe need the, two, three years to develop a very good product without facing with the market feedback. And this is really, really, I think, a mistake. So don't be shy to present uh, the product or, or your service to uh, the, the, the audience and your, uh, your main stakeholder. Um, in Tridom, uh, since the beginning, we recognized that we could uh, eventually ask uh, and apply for grant uh, and awards. And this was a good support at the beginning of, uh, of our work. And uh, the big one was in 2013 when we um, were awarded, award, awarded by uh, Agra Foundation, financed by Bill Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation. They award us with a half million dollar. That of mm -hmm. course was, uh, the first, uh, uh, I will say, um, pillar, the first base to build uh, a team, mm -hmm. to hire the first employees, to build uh, a first uh, structure in Freedom. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, what is the, um, the change you have experienced the past 12 years since 2010, you started Freedom and now 12 years has passed. What's the the level of awareness or consciousness in terms of companies or individuals um, contributing to the society, to the world? Has it been, have you witnessed a change? <clears throat> well, a, a little bit I answered before by telling the the, the simple fact of nine companies dealing with yes. the environment now and that was the opposite in the past. So this is very, very simple. And now corporations recognize that if they want to grow, if they want to sell their product, they should uh, uh, take care of the environment and show to their audience that uh, they are taking care of the planet. This is simply based on the fact that uh, uh, more than 70% of uh, consumer uh, choose uh, product uh, and look at the sustainability of the product they are buying. So a uh, company, if they want to still sell or eventually uh, extend their market, uh, they have to uh, take care of the planet by improving their uh, supply chain, the packaging uh, and also supporting and planting trees, for example. Uh, looking at um, the consumers, so the, our user base, um, well, I think that at the beginning, uh, um, people uh, plant trees or give trees uh, because 
not because they take care too much about the environment, but because they think uh, that it was an innovative gift. Uh, now, thanks especially to the, all the movement, Fridays for Future, Greta Thunberg, in the last four years, we have seen more and more new generation, Gen Z, very, mm -hmm. very committed to the environment. I have seen, uh, uh, and I've talked with some senior manager, and they contact us because my, uh, my son told me that my company should do something for the environment. And for the first, and they asked me as a future generation that me as a manager, I should do something. So also the future and the Gen Z move the mind and change a little bit the behavior and the mind of their uh, parents and, uh, and ideally of the, the entire community because they ask uh, for a good future, I would say, and a clean future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the next question is now you are working in 17 countries and uh, we are all certain that each country has its different mindset, different culture, different customs, therefore different legal systems, so forth. And the, what was the, how did you deal with them? What was the key to be able to be smoothly get into these different areas? Um, yeah, good question. I mean, um, of course, uh, planting trees in different countries of the world require to know a little bit the, the local ecosystem, um, the, the local legislation. Uh, first of all, uh, thinking about the, the land right. So uh, who owns the land, uh, if it's uh, from the governor, if, if it's private land. So um, basically, what we have done is that we have created the sort of a three dom methodology system where uh, for, for being part of three dom uh, platform, you should respect uh, several um, well, environmental uh, and the social uh, uh, rules, I will say. So mm -hmm. once we have created this kind of uh, framework that is, uh, of course, uh, is very strict in terms of uh, how you develop a project, how you provide benefit. It's, it's, it's also very, very open to different uh, uh, system, to different uh, NGOs, to different uh, countries. Uh, so right now we act uh, as a platform. So we are receiving application from a group of farmers and NGOs all over the world. We have a selection process where we evaluate how this organization is organized, if they are serious, if they are able to plant trees. And what we do is that by training them and by creating a long-term trust, we are creating a long-term partnership. Uh, this is simple by giving an example. So. Um, Usually the first year when we start a new partnership with the NGOs, we ask them to make a trial period. So for the first year, for example, we allow them, we create a nursery together, but we allow them to plant the first 5,000 trees, 10,000 trees. And we start working together. We train the local farmers and we try to discover if they are good in planting trees and especially in taking care of the trees. So after one year, if we recognize that they are doing a good job, we allow them to plant maybe 20,000 trees of 25,000 trees. So we extend the work, we allow new farmers to join the organization and receiving more trees. And also thanks to the word of mouth in every country, more and more farmers want to receive training uh, trees uh, to, uh, to have the possibility to plant trees and receiving fruit. So uh, this is how, where we built trust year on year. And uh, for example, now in some project in Haiti or Kenya, where we operate for more than five years, we plant uh, more than 1,000 trees per year because they, mm -hmm. we extend the community, the, mm -hmm. the old farmers, they can teach to the other one. Uh, they are a sort of, uh, for us, a guarantee that uh, the quality mm -hmm. of the project will be respected. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, we have some several more questions. 
in chat uh, that we like to share with you. And the ACES tree, well, it's it's um, a bit repetitive, but a tree that works with companies. And what are the motivation for those companies to join the effort by Trillium? What is as a CSR or they are brand creation or? Yeah, I think that we, uh, the, the basic concept is that we support and we help company to better communicate their sustainability. So uh, I can start by giving you an example. Some corporation all over the world, they buy carbon credit. So uh, basic certificates where they can say, I buy this certificate and I offset uh, uh, 10 tons of CO2 is just an example, but uh, it's very hard for the uh, for the audience to understand uh, how how big is 10 tons of CO2. Do you know how big is one tons of CO2? Mm -hmm. No one knows. I guess uh, I'm happy to, to mm -hmm. if someone in the audience know how is big one tons of CO2. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard. Well. Simply is a is a sphere of eight meters. So uh. you know, so when a corporation said, "Well, I offset one hundred tons of CO two," no one understand how big is the effort of the corporation. Right. By planting trees, we all knows how is important. How is important one single trees. So mm -hmm. this is the clear message, and I think uh, one of the main reasons why corporations come to us. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, of course, we develop a different project with different departments in the organization. We usually start with internal communication, so human resources. Uh, sometimes a corporation create a forest and give the tree to each employees. This is mm -hmm. a first step, uh, and. Uh, very always the, your employees are the voice uh, of the company, the first uh, business card of the company, the first way you present uh, outside is your employees. So if your employees know that uh, the company is committed to the environment, they can be the first voice for the, for the audience outside. Then we develop different program. Uh, it can be related to one trees, uh, one product sold. So in this case, it's more related to a single product. Sometimes we work with big events and uh, the, the tree can be a gift for every participant. Um, so right now we develop very different program. We work with the loyalty program. So mm -hmm. company reward, um, the, their customers uh, with trees, uh, for example, when they make a green action, uh, we are now partnering with partnering with with some uh, banks, institution, utilities company. Uh, for example, they run a project related to paperless. So instead of receiving paper billing at home, you can switch. Uh, to an online building, but saving paper, of course, and paper comes to the cutting of trees and the company reward the, their customers for this green action by planting or by gifting a tree to them. Mm -hmm. so this is just a few examples. Yeah, that's a great example. Um, and another question came from somebody, um, since you started, you launched uh, Treedom. There must uh, you must have different phases in development, and the, what is was the most challenging phase? Um, probably in the beginning, but and if you can share with us. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Well, the first challenge was to find the uh, an impact business model that works. So I probably I. I spent a few words before uh, by saying that at the beginning was not only the money, so it, it was not um, not enough to pay farmers to plant trees. So finding a way to engage them in the long term, of course, for us uh, is uh, is a key factor for uh, to run a successful uh, uh, project on the field. So. Uh, 
uh, we spent two or three years to find uh, the way. And finally, as I said, by building uh, agroforestry project, we probably can maximize the impact in terms of environment and social impact, but we can also guarantee that the farmers will take care of the trees. So this was the first, uh, the, the very first challenge we were facing. Um, then uh, the, the second one was to raise money from investors. So it was not, as I said, it was not easy to, um, to involve investors in a project that uh, sometimes they feel, but well, you want to make money or you want to impact the environment. And uh, it's, not, it's not easy to answer and to find a good balance between uh, um, economic uh, uh, economic value and uh, and impact. So um, it was a challenge, and still uh, every day when we have to communicate uh, how we decide if to maximize the uh, the profit or maximize the impact is always find a a good balance. Uh, of course, we. Uh, we reinvest all our profit for the growth, for planting uh, more trees, uh, opening new offices and new area means uh, to have uh, to increase the impact. So till now, um, we well, the challenge was uh, to find the right investor. So uh, mm -hmm. not only impact investor, but investor that uh, can wait. So they do not expect uh, financial return in short term, but they understand that we want to create a global platform, that we have uh, several sources of revenue and that we need to grow to, to have a big uh, impact in the world and also to have a uh, financial return. So this is, uh, this is of course, uh, a challenge. The third one is to um, probably to, to go to go all over the world, so to to bring the project all over the world. Sometimes uh, the the way how we sell trees in Italy is a little bit different on how trees are perceived in uh, uh, in Europe, uh, in US, uh, and Japan, for example. So. Um, we have noticed, for example, that uh, a very, very fr friendly and happy tone of, tone of voice in Italy is the best way to engage people, because we think that um, planting trees is something positive, and in Italy we always uh, uh, communicate the good of planting trees. But for if, just to give you an example, in the north of Europe, the problem of climate change is something that people uh, that affect people. People are um, well, really, really scary about the climate change. So sometimes it's not the right way to have a positive tone of voice of planting trees in some countries. So uh, the challenge right now is to find uh, a unique tone of voice, or eventually every market trying to um, well, change a little bit the tone of voice, the message, depending on the moment, and so on. So this is, a, of course, the, the last challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And how do you see um, freedom will be at in five years, 10 years? Well, what we want to do is to to open your office, to be present all over the world. I think that um, we want to build more and more uh, uh, a digital experience for uh, our users. So the plan for the, for the next year is to, um, uh, to build the, the best digital experience to plant trees online. And mm -hmm. uh, if you know all the world related to uh, metaverse, uh, and all the, well, the, 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 this uh, new world, I think that we, 10 years ago, or mm -hmm. we already built this alter ego of the real trees plant, the, the, the digital alter ego. So mm. probably we already have the experience and uh, something uh, uh, already in place to build. Mm -hmm. So we would like to uh, provide to our users the experience to, to be in the middle of a forest, to, to see virtually your tree and uh, your friend uh, close to your tree that they are supporting uh, this, uh, this project. Mm -hmm. There's a question from um, 
employee from a very big corporation in Japan. Uh, she says uh, she's afraid that Twitter may have risk that companies do not try to decrease their negative impact from their activities while they use freedom to offset the emission. Do you see the risk? Yeah, it's always a risk. I think uh, basically at the beginning, uh, we do not care too much about it because the, the, the main goal was to uh, plant uh, as, as much more trees as possible. And uh, without uh, a, well, a financial revenue, well, a financial model that we in place and without financial resource, we were, we took a little bit of risk in the past. Now uh, we are much more structured. We work with 8,000 corporation, uh, very, very big corporation worldwide. And of course, uh, for us, uh, we try to minimize the risk, but not only for us, but especially for our partners. So what we do and uh, we accept customer we accept to plant trees for a corporation if the corporation has already in place a sustainability program sustainability yeah. goal so we understand that changing the supply chain improving the uh, carbon footprint of a product a service uh, need times uh, also to change uh, everything in a corporation so uh, uh, we understand it and we think it's impossible from tomorrow to, to be totally clean as a corporation. Sure. So we ask the corporation to take the first step. And uh, if they are already doing something, if they have a good sustainability plan for the future, we accept them to support them to communicate what they have done till now and which is the program for the future. So. Uh, we think that this is a serious way to, to work uh, and, uh, and a sustainable uh, transition toward a more uh, green, uh, a more green uh, world. Okay, there's um, something from another employee from a very big company in Japan that she would like to know the, um, how the quality of life, level of life of the farmers, beneficiaries have improved? Yes, thank you for the question. Well, um, the trees need a little bit of time to, to grow and to produce fruit. But uh, uh, what we have seen and uh, we have done a uh, first uh, research for measuring impact, we are now looking for a framework that can be applied to all our projects where we measure not, not only CO2 absorb, uh, environmental benefit, but also economic and social benefit for the farmer. So we have done a, a pilot project called the ROI return, well, um, return of impact investing. And we noticed that, for example, just to give you an over idea, one farmer usually can take care of 100, 200 uh, trees. And uh, uh, starting from the third, fourth year, he can harvest the fruit. So, for example, uh, if farmers own mango trees, uh, uh, avocado trees, uh, uh, cocoa or coffee trees, he can earn up to 2,000 euros per year as an extra income coming from uh, 100 uh, trees. So it's about $20 per tree every year for 10, 15 years. So this is a strong value if you compare the annual income in Africa or in Central and South America, this is sometimes more than the uh, than more than an average income. And if you think that uh, planting a cocoa or an avocado trees cost to plant and maintain 20, 30 euros, the value we are created for the community is much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, 
this question, he says, he understands that forests are lost due to different reasons, climate change, uh, over cutting down trees, desert, desertification, yeah, large scale forest fires like in Australia. On the other hand, um, there's a very positive planning, planning tree efforts, including yours. Do you have a strategy to address those diverse situations? Well, um, it's um, it's it's very hard because to to have a strategy. I think that um, uh, in uh, in all the countries where we operate, by implementing the tree dome project, we are uh, showing to the farmers that planting trees is better to cut the trees and that they have to protect the forest. Uh, so mm, for us, it's very hard to um, I will say to preserve other areas uh, and I think that in the uh, in the ecosystem of uh, organization that uh, are um, operating in uh, in the trees and the forestry agroforestry space uh, there are several good projects for example all the red plus is a project where they are protecting the current forest um, our work uh, is more to rebuild the ecosystem. So when there is a deforested area, when there is a risk of desertification, our work is to plant new trees. Um, of course, uh, uh, on daily basis, by promoting tree dome, by promoting the importance of trees, uh, ideally to millions of people and corporations worldwide, we are not directly, but indirectly communicating that it is important to preserve the trees and forests. So uh, I think that there is a huge part of education also in the tree diary, in our blog, in every um, uh, communication. We, we, we are trying to be very, very technical to show the fact, uh, not taking it even a, a position because sometimes uh, we say, okay, we plant trees. We don't want to be very political because you know, sometimes we operate with also big corporation. There are several equilibrium. We don't want to be a political company. So uh, we, we want to talk about fact and we want to act uh, by planting trees. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, if you could, uh, we heard this, you, you were talking about agroforestry many times, and it, that's the key. It's a creating ecosystem. Yes, it's not like planting trees, but understand the whole ecosystem and then make it work. And it, that's the key of tree dam, we understand. Um, but we're not familiar with that before we read your um website so if you can uh, articulate more about agro agroforestry for japanese audience because it's we are not familiar with that well uh, agroforestry project as i said is uh, basically um, trying to uh, look at the nature so in the nature for example you will never find in a forest uh, just one piece species and we have seen also with the uh, with the pandemic uh, uh, period and uh, in several situations that by planting just one species, maybe you can count count the number of trees easier or the CO two absorb because you just uh, make uh, replace the number. But uh, we have seen that this is not the natural uh, ecosystem. So in the nature, there's different species that can help each other. And this is basically uh, an agroforestry system. So uh, trying to mix uh, local species where each one can support each other. For example, uh, for, to, to grow cocoa trees or banana trees, you need shadows. So we built ecosystem where a, a, a forest trees can support and save uh, the, 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 like the fruit trees. Or uh, we, Sometimes we plant a seasonal crop that they can empower the soil. 
So by mixing uh, different species, uh, both fruit, uh, forest, and also seasonal crop, uh, we think that we are creating system where each uh, species can empower the other one. And uh, also they require less uh, water because the, the soil is more fertilized. Uh, uh, and, uh, and this is something, a uh, sort of independent ecosystem. So uh, mm -hmm. not uh, a unique system. In every country, we are trying first to look at what uh, is in place, which species uh, uh, we can plant, and we design uh, in partnership with uh, local farmers uh, the, the good uh, agroforestry system. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I think it's all ecosystem for the nature and for human beings, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just that one segmental solution doesn't work. It's the whole thing we have to understand. Um, so thank you so much for today. And the, I hope that uh, we can all be a part of Tridom, the Japanese individuals and Japanese corporations. So um, when they, it's, we are all free from the virus, please mm -hmm. come visit Japan for a personal sure. appearance. It will be a pleasure to meet you in person. Yes, that'd be great. Um, thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. Uh, and it's, uh, let me introduce that, um, two interpreters who are perfect to, in, um, they studied your program in depth. So uh, they were the one who brought up about agroforestry because Japanese audience now should be more educated about the whole thing. So thank you so much today. And the, uh hope we can see you in person sometime soon. Perfect. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.